I'd like to welcome everyone into uh, our, our virtual Zoom meeting here. Uh, we hope everyone's been doing well, staying safe and, and healthy throughout all this. Obviously, a uh, uncertain buzzword uh, around things right now. Who knows when things will be back in the meantime, staying home and staying safe. Uh, AJ Ricketts here with you. Great to be alongside Coach Davis once again. Coach, I feel like it was both just yesterday and also a lifetime ago. We were in the GC pit for, for National Signing Day. Uh, it, it feels like it was yesterday, but also a long time. Uh, so much has obviously happened since then. But first, uh, glad you're safe. Glad you're well. How is everything for you? And, and, and what have you been up to here the last yeah. couple of weeks? Well, AJ, FIU Panther fans that are hopefully watching this. And if they don't watch it now, they'll watch yeah. it later when it uh, gets posted again. But, uh, you know, obviously uh, our family is safe. And, uh, you know, I think that everybody at first when, you know, when the very first words were that they were going to close the schools down and people were going to have to start distancing themselves. Uh, you didn't have any kind of an idea as to how long it was going to last. Was it going to last two weeks? Was it a three, four week deal? Uh, but I think certainly, I think everybody for, you know, one of the great things about American people are that they really truly put the priority in order and safety was considerably yeah. more important than staying on campus and coaches and our players. I mean, we miss it and we yeah. loved it and we would have loved to have had that. We were having an unbelievable off season condition program. Uh, Andrew Swayze was doing a phenomenal job prepping our kids to get ready to have a great spring practice. Uh, but obviously, you know, for our kids to be able to go home, to be with their family. And uh, if there's one good positive thing, you know, you hate it for the families that have had a death or are significant illnesses. One of the great things, AJ, that has come through this is, is I think people are really getting a chance to reconnect with their families. That, uh, you know, a lot of times when kids go off to college, uh, you see them at spring break, you see them maybe a little bit at some of the holidays, but they're gone. Well, now all of a sudden, you know, now you've got six, seven, eight weeks now where they're at home with you and yeah. reconnect and uh, get a chance to listen to uncles. And, and uh, so from that standpoint, I think that that's been a good thing for this. Yeah, that's a good point. So often, you know, it differs sport by sport, but certainly collegiate football, yeah. basketball, baseball, three models where – once you head off to school for your freshman year, you're rarely back home for more yep. than two weeks. That might be the most you ever spend at <laughs> home in the next four or five. That's certainly changed, but that's also an aspect that coaches are not used to. Mm. Two plus weeks uh, where, where kids are at home. And so y you guys have had to be innovative. I think, and I talked with Jonathan Cyprian about this. We'll have a podcast coming out with him uh, tomorrow before the Good. draft. Of course, the highest draft. But look, it's got to be tough. To, to be motivated and to train when there's that element of uncertainty. We're all so goal-oriented as athletes and coaches. When there's uncertainty, that probably changes things a bit. So you guys have had to get creative in, in motivating the athletes, but it's all the staff a chance to have some pretty cool guest speakers and, and, and yeah. when you're looking at that route. Yeah. You know what, AJ, and I, and I give my coaching staff a tremendous amount of credit. Uh, the very first week when we separated from each other, we started having, uh, you know, a major staff uh, conference call where everybody got on the line and we were doing it like twice a week. And we were talking about, okay, how are we going to plan for all these things that may, you know, that we may not be able to come back in two weeks or three weeks or four weeks. Yeah. And we were at that time, we were kind of somewhat optimistic that maybe we would be able to come back uh, for summer session A or whatever and have the kids and maybe have OTA days. So we really started planning things. And one of the things, if you just kind of want to go through the week real quickly, like yeah. Sundays, we send out a major message to everybody. It's kind of like a state of the union. Like when the president goes on and he once a year, he says to the entire nation, this is what's going on in America. Well, this is what's going on in FIU's football program. And we put it out on Sunday night. And we also been on Wednesday night, you know, mm -hmm. every three to four days. That way kids get it there's get it. their parents we're we're sending it to our players parents so that they're in the loop on everything then obviously everybody in the staff program the coaches graduate assistants strength and conditioning uh, kevin o'neill our trainer amanda fernandez our nutritionist uh andrew swayze our strength and so everybody's on there and it's usually about a two yeah. to two and a half hour meeting the big major thing aj that everybody still has to realize is is that all of our players 
are still in class, okay? Well, yeah. Actually, this week is, is finals week. So the previous five weeks, kids were online classes. So we were doing an awful lot of checking with uh, our academic support program, and they were reaching out to players, and they were doing their tutoring. Uh, they were, you know, doing everything, making sure that players were turning in papers, doing their assignments, uh, getting prepared for final exams and those kinds of things. And so hopefully, you know, we'll find out on Friday – uh, which will be the end of the semester. How did our, our classes turn out as far as academics? So, you yeah. know, so we had a lot of things to cover in the staff meetings. We did, the, we started doing uh, four weeks ago, I started doing a leadership meeting on Sunday night for a couple of hours where we just get on a conference call and we talk and we usually have a couple of topics. And, and sure. one of the topics you know, AJ is, is, is if you're a real leader, if you really truly are somebody that's going to set an example for what we want to accomplish, Part of that is is reaching out to your teammates and stay connected. We can't be in the room together. You can't work out together. You're scattered all over the state of Florida, and a lot yeah. of kids are outside. But you can get on the phone, and you can, you can you know, do the social media stuff and, and encourage them. Be positive. Tell them what's going on. Uh, guys have found ways to do creatively to, to work out because a lot of the gyms uh, are closed high schools they don't have a place to go to work and so yeah. for an example which was really truly good jason walker uh posted a deal and he sent it back to uh, uh to bren renner our, our secondary coach and he was doing vertical jumps from his driveway into the bed of a pickup truck you know so i mean when guys are trying if you don't have weights that you can squat and you can do all those kinds of things here's a guy that's doing doing something and create. So when he shared that, then a lot of other guys started showing guys running up hills and guys doing all kinds of variety of things to be creative. So, uh, you know, I think that that's what leaders do is they really, truly try to help all their teammates. Uh, then during the course of the week, obviously, at first, the first two weeks, we were only allowed to have um, six hours during the course of the week that included running and lifting, which we didn't have a gym. But two hours with the coaches, Zoom position meetings. Well, yeah. it went from two hours, and then it went up to – and then last week they raised it up to eight hours. The NCAA passed a rule where now you have, in the course of Monday through Thursdays, you have at least a 90-minute meeting with all your positions. Uh, the offensive coaches can have meetings with themselves or with the entire offense and the defense because, I mean, we can't waste this time. Uh, one of the biggest messages, AJ, that I talked to the players about at the very beginning was is that we there's going to be a game. There's going to be a season, and we are going to play. And we can't look back and say, well, you know what? We wasted 10 weeks or 12 weeks or however long it is that we're not on campus and working out, and we can't. it's okay if we don't play well because we didn't get to do that. That's not going to be the, the, the way we're going to attack this. Yeah. Our players are going to be – you know, they're going to be in great shape. They're going to learn well, the best we can through Zoom. And, you know, it won't be like going back to square one and starting all over. So we've got a busy week all week, a lot of things going on with it. And uh, and the good news is, is that all of our players have been able to stay healthy. Their families yeah. have been staying have stayed real serious issue that we had Tyson Maeva, who is a grad a transfer that are a transfer that came from Boise State. Right. And unfortunately, uh, a real significant member of his family, an uncle that lived in San Diego, did pass away uh, with mm -hmm. the virus. And so as of right, that's the only individual that we know of. Right. And so kind of thank God that, you know, all of our guys and our families are pretty much staying healthy. And I tell you, I think the, the facet, the angle of those leadership meetings, that's, it's really powerful for players. You know, a lot of, a lot of stuff can be staff yep. driven, but obviously you've always said, you know, your best teams, a lot of things, a lot of leadership is player driven. And, and that's pretty awesome. Obviously uh, one of the leaders yep. of the past, you mean, you know, uh, he's, he's yeah. been labeled uh, maybe the next Tom Brady if uh, New England drafts him. I'll tell you the similarity he has with Tom Brady already. Yeah. Uh, you heard the story Tom Brady went out to a Tampa park to, to just get some work in and was quickly escorted out of that park. <laughs> James got kicked out of a Wisconsin park too <laughs> back home. He was getting some reps in and oh, no. uh, was pretty quickly asked to, uh, to leave the premises. I feel that's uh, just a, a, a rite of passage for a lot of uh, that didn't surprise work you. in. You know, that really doesn't surprise you about James. And, and we've had a bunch of our seniors. And one of the really sad things, AJ, to be honest with you, was that we missed 
uh, the spring pro day for our seniors. And that's yeah. one of the things, I mean, we've tried to send out videos and highlight videos of our, our seniors. Uh, for the first time, we had a lot of our seniors got some really significant exposure. You know, obviously we talked about James and, and Stanley Thomas. Those two got a chance to play in the East West all-star game. We had a couple of players to your tart uh, NFL uh, players association uh, in Los Angeles, uh, uh, Anthony Jones got a chance to play in the Hula Bowl. Sage yeah. Lewis was the MVP defensively uh, in another of one of the senior bowl games. And so, you know, thank God for them. They got a chance to get some extra exposure prior to a pro day yeah. uh, that will help their opportunities to maybe either get drafted or signed as free agents. You, know, you know, this week it'll be interesting to see how the draft actually goes. Yeah, really excited to, to have that on tomorrow. Yeah. Probably uh, it happened between the Bulls documentary and the NFL draft. <laughs> this, this week has had some, some good television for us to, uh, yep. to partake in. All right, I want to get into some Twitter questions here, sure. Coach. We had a lot of engagement when we asked for uh, any inquiries of you this afternoon. So a lot of folks chiming in so want to want to give them a little bit of spotlight here uh let's start with anna from twitter um once wants to know quite simply what's your goal for the upcoming season so to that point you know it's again the goal to set shorter long-term goals when there's that uncertainty but sure. half setting at this point in time. Yeah. you know i mean before we even left i mean when we started our off-season conditioning program before spring practice we started talking yeah. about goals and obviously one of the goals is, is that we want to continue this. We want to have a fourth bowl game. Uh, I think that the, the next most important thing, though, is, is we want to put ourselves in a position uh, to compete for and to play for Conference USA championship game. Uh, you know, we were close two yeah. years ago. I think last year, if we hadn't had so many injuries and things that went a little bit sideways from and injuries ourselves in a situation for, but that's got to be a goal is to get into that because if you win the Conference USA Championship, it puts you in a position that maybe you might qualify for a January 1 or January yep. 6 bowl game. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, the realistic part of it is we want to play and we want to get prepared to start the season and play really well and get off to a good start in game one because you really you, you can't hypothetically start talking about games two, yeah. three, four, seven, and 12. Uh, you want to play well. We want our football team to be healthy in great position. Uh, you know, we've got positional goals and things where we've got to try to, and we've got to, try to develop yeah. a brand-new quarterback. And we've got some young. We got four young kids on the on the on the roster that uh, you know you would have liked to have had some of that, you know, clear itself sure. up during spring practices. But we're not <laughs> going to get that. So now it's going to put a significant amount of of importance to the training camp practices. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Uh, moving forward, our, our second question comes from Alejandro. Uh, he goes, Coach, recruiting, check. Uh, bowl games, check. Uh, beating UM check now how can we get alumni and students to keep the yeah. support and come to the game and i'll tell you why i remember i really wish we had a home game after that my miami way because you saw no the kid. coaches show it was, it was like college game day there but oh. hearing that momentum from the end of the yeah. season and what, what what's in mind for you well i mean one of the things aj and you know, Alejandro, that I've, I've expressed this to the student body yeah. uh, all of the last three seasons. When you go off to college, part of it is, is you're, trying to, you're trying to build a, a, an educational process that will let you have a career for the rest of your life. But one of the other things that you should be trying to do when you create memories that last a lifetime. And a lot of those memories are, are going to functions and things that happen on campus, sporting events, going to football games, going to basketball games, going to baseball games. I think that that's one of those things that's really going to band concerts, going to plays on campus. Those are things that you can go and you can do it with your friends, uh, with your uh, people in your dorm, your sorority, your fraternity, the people in your neighborhood. And, and trust me, 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, you're going to look back on those on those events and say, you know what, remember when we went to the Miami football game at Marlin? Man, how, how awesome was yeah. that? And those are things. And so hopefully, you know, uh, hopefully we can kind of try to get more students involved, more faculty members to come and, and be a part of the program. And, uh, you know, with three straight bowl games and hopefully with a fourth one coming up, 
uh, hopefully people will start to realize that it is a great event to go on a Saturday. And it wasn't just at Marlins Park. Another great moment at Ricardo Silva that comes to mind was Olin Cushion diving in the back of the end zone for a game-saving yeah. interception on homecoming. Just mo- moments yeah. like that. There have been plenty, and there will be plenty more to come, and we're Absolutely. certainly really excited about it. All right, Chris, Pro- Chris Ponce, he's chiming in. He says, Coach, this is an interesting question. Real simple. For the upcoming season, what are you most excited about? I'm, I'm most excited about our players. You know, football teams, Chris, I will tell you this. I, our player, I say this to our players all the time. Every football team ever been involved mm-hmm. in, whether it was high school football teams or teams at other schools, every one of them has a unique personality. Yeah. They're different, okay? We lost 18, 19 seniors, and we're bringing in 18, 19, 20 freshmen. So the personality is completely different. And so from a football coach's perspective, you're always excited about, okay, how is this football team going to start to bond? How are they going to kind of come together? How are they going to start to either the older players start taking the younger players under their wing and start trying to teach them how do you train? How do you become a winner? How important is it to stay on track academically and stuff? And so those are things that excite me. And and especially now, you know, now that we've recruited uh, four classes is to watch those kids and see if they're absolutely as good as we thought they were as we started to recruit them, because now we've graduated some players. So there's going to be a lot of significant positions that are going to be open. And uh, it'll be very interesting during the month of August or July, whenever we get a chance to come back to kind of find out who's, who's hungry, who really truly wants to earn those positions. And before we get to the next question, I want to ask you on that tangent. That's a great point (coughs) because Butch, I think there's a precedent for at least on the initial, on the, on the surface storylines that we have for next year. You look back at the 2018 season, we had lost Alex Magoo, our starting quarterback. We had lost Alex Gardner, our starting running back. A lot of that, right, had, had departed after the 17th season. The feel from at least on the outside in terms of expectations was that there would be some natural regression. And it didn't happen. Nine wins later, we were celebrating in Nassau. Some of us celebrated an extra night when the charter plane didn't arrive. But that's, that's another story. <laughs> that's a another story. story. By itself. It, sure. you know, it, but, but a lot of guys stepped into roles that year and elevated their play. It helped that James establish yeah. himself as a leader under center. What's important to have success yeah. after a lot of turnover? Because at least on the surface, it looks like that might be a similar theme here yeah. this year. You know what, AJ, and, and probably the very first story that I told the 2020 football team in January before we started off-season conditioning, yeah. I told them the story at the University of Miami in 1986. Uh, we were playing for the national championship against Penn State, and it was two 12-0 teams playing for the championship, and, and unfortunately, you know, we lost that game. Yeah. Uh, but in that class at the University of Miami was Heisman uh, you know, Vinny Testaverde, Jerome Brown, Alonzo Highsmith, uh, Winston Maul, greatest players that have ever played college football. And when that season was over with, everybody said, well, look at this. They, the first three of the first five draft choices, you know, yeah. they're gone. You know, Miami's going to take a dump. They're going to go downhill. They're going to have to rebuild. It'll take them a couple of years. Uh, the players and the coaches – kind of got a little bit of a chip on their shoulder and said, you know what, we're going to do that. We're going to come back and we're going to be a football team that nobody expects. Well, the story ends with the fact that we went undefeated and we won the national championship yep. the next year with a lot of players that nobody had any idea who they were. Jerome Brown was gone. Well, here comes Russell Maryland. You know, and there was a lot of people coming, you know, you lose Vinny Testaverde and Steve Walsh steps up. Nobody knew who Steve Walsh was and, and how good of a quarterback that he was going to be. I mean, he'd been behind, you know, Vinny Testaverde and Bernie Kosar and those guys, and everybody thought, well, you know, they're never going to have anybody good enough to win a national championship. So, you know, it's all about a, a, a team that you set your goals, you set your dreams, you set your sights, and you inspire your teammates. And you kind of get a little bit of a chip on your shoulder and say, okay, this is what I can do to make this team become a champion. And if everybody starts doing that, we'll have a chance to have that kind of a season. And and that was such a – 
I think under the surface, that was in the minds of, of a lot of the guys on that 18 team at the very least. It'd be fun to yeah. see. It's going to be fun to see how it encompasses itself in 20. But a lot of folks stepped up in 2018, whether yeah. it was Bryce Singleton, you know, as a freshman, <laughs> three touchdowns in the season yeah. finale, or like we mentioned, you know, James Morgan or the running sure. back. There's so many facets, and, and that was so fun. I remember reading before the season, FIU losing so many people, maybe four or five wins. Oh, nah, no, nah, that's yeah. nah, these guys. Yeah. These guys were hungry and they had that trip and it ended up being Absolutely. a very positive nine win season that ended in the Bahamas. Yep. Uh, here we go. Uh, Chief Casas of the yeah, FIU yeah. Police Department. He has an important question. Uh, this has been a storyline on social media the entire offseason. So Chief, Chief Casas says, Coach, I still have eligibility. Do you need a Gatorade guard? Do you need some <laughs> extra help from Chief Casas? I wish we had Gatorade. <laughs> Absolutely. We could use. Let me tell you something. Al, he's one of the greatest guys and does a phenomenal job. His staff and everybody's awesome, and and he's funny. Uh, yeah, I, I I just wanted to make sure he's there. You know, uh, making sure the stadium is being protected. Make sure somebody yeah. doesn't steal the goalposts. Well, Chief, Chief, if you if you want to be the Gatorade guard, I think I think yeah. you need to send him the the these off season workouts. You're sending. You need to get him in. in line well, this is ready. what I want to see with yeah. all this open time. I want to find out how good his golf game is because oh, prior yeah. to all of this, he was in the weight room and he yeah. was working on his swing and, and working on his rotation of his hips and everything. So uh, he's probably got it down to about like a two handicap now. Hey, hey, Chief, everyone can drive 250, 300. Yeah, putting makes the money, man. Putting <laughs> is <laughs> gotta gotta get on the green, not the weight room. That's that's that the, always the, that's the problem for all of us. Yeah. Uh, let's let's talk about the draft a little bit, Coach. Uh, obviously, sure. that with that upcoming, uh, your record <laughs> speaks for itself. Thirty six first round draft picks, uh, nearly one hundred fifty players drafted uh, that have been under uh, your tutelage. So it, it's really the culmination, right, of the moment that you made that first phone call or that first visit to them when they were a high school recruit. It's mm -hmm. certainly not the culmination of that friendship of that relationship that's it's all just getting started but to you as a coach yeah really i mean obviously you got your fingers crossed and and uh, you hope because so many of the kids are really truly hoping and praying that they get that opportunity very few kids get a chance to be first second third round draft choices but yeah. a high percentage of kids get an opportunity to go into the national football Football League, the sixth or seventh round draft choice. Maybe they get a chance to go in as a free agent. And once they get into camp, yeah. I guarantee you, you got just as good a chance if you go into camp as a free agent as anybody else. All you got to do is show up and play and make plays and uh, and and make it unbelievably difficult for a team. Uh, you know, and so obviously, I think that we do have some kids that. Uh, this senior class. I, obviously, we've talked about James Morgan and Stanley Thomas. I think both of those guys are going to have really, really good uh, weekend. This going to get a chance to get drafted. Yeah. We got some other guys that I really, truly believe, and I think that Sage Lewis. You know, I think the versatility that he showed during his career because he started off his career playing will linebacker when Anthony Went was still on the team. Well, once yeah. Anthony graduated and went to the New York Jets, we moved Sage inside because we felt like that he would be a leader he had the most experience and I think that that versatility will intrigue you know some of the NFL teams that'll give him a uh, some really good close looks I yeah. think Tier Tart I mean you know he was he showed a lot of things throughout his entire career especially his senior year where yeah. he could be a, di a dominating interior type of a, a defensive lineman that can penetrate call, be a disruptive type of a player uh, one of the guys that I I feel really bad for is Maurice Alexander that, uh, you know, he was probably one of the best punt returners yeah. in college football for the last two seasons. Yeah. And breaking his, oh, breaking his leg this year, uh, week six or week seven. I mean, he's explosive. I mean, he's returned punch for touchdown. Kind of reminds you a little bit of a, like a T.Y. Hilton type of yeah. a player that the more that NFL teams play, 11 personnel, which is three wide receivers, and sometimes they get into four wide receivers, and they're looking for those fast, quick, athletic type of guys that are in the slot that can can run option routes. They've got speed. They can run jet sweeps. I think that he's going to catch a lot of people, you know, with, with some of their uh, attention and stuff. I think that Ike Brown, I mean, uh, speed is invaluable. I mean, it's one of the things you can coach a lot of things, but you can't coach a 4'8 kid to run 4'4". And I can run 4-4. Four, four. 
and he plays on he plays on special teams. He's a gunner, uh, covers punts, and I think a lot of our kids have learned over the last couple of years how critically important it is if you want to get drafted and you want to play on the next level, you've got to be a significant contributor to special teams. One yeah. phase, two phase, three phases, and uh, and I think that Ike's got a chance for him to to have a chance to 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 be taken look at. Uh, you know, a couple of the other guys. You know, I think the two running backs, I think Anthony Jones and Napoleon Maxwell, I mean, uh, they're fast, they're big, they're strong, uh, they catch the ball well, they're, they're tough, the blitz pick up, they're really good like yeah. that. The thing that everybody has to, whether it's the fans that are watching this show or whether it's our players and, and their people, you know, what do, what do teams need and, uh, you know, and how are they going, you know, at what stage do they need somebody? Do they need a running back in the third round or do they need one in the fifth round? Yeah. And, uh, and are they loaded with a certain position? And so, you know, you just hope that all, you know, I'd like to see probably six, seven or eight of our kids get a chance to, to get into camp, you know, this summer. And, and there's the aspect too that even if you're not taken as one of those last round picks, maybe that's a little bit more advantageous. You can work sure. a free agent deal to a spot where you might have a better chance to, to prove sure. yourself on, on the scout team or, or eventually. AJ, in the seconds yeah, I've told our players and I've told every place I've ever about Bill Bates. And for fans that are listening to this, you may not even have a clue who Bill Bates was, but Bill Bates was a walk on at the University of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And in his walk on class, there was a hundred freshmen, okay, as a walk on. And a couple of years later, he earns a scholarship at Tennessee, plays his career at Tennessee, doesn't get drafted. And back in the days, the Dallas Cowboys, they had, they, I think there was a 12-round draft. He still didn't get drafted. He got signed to the Dallas Cowboys to go to Thousand Oaks uh, with the rookie free agent training camp. Not the veterans, not the guys they drafted. That They took probably 75 to 80 players out there. They practiced for four weeks. And those 80, they ended up keeping maybe a dozen of them. Yeah. And they got to stay for the rest of the camp when they brought the 100 veterans in. <laughs> and after 100 veterans, 63-man roster, he played for the Dallas Cowboys, I think, 17 years, helped them win three Super mm -hmm. Bowls, uh, was, a, was a, you know, a Pro Bowl player on special teams. And, and to me, you know, that, that, that if it happens to one person, it can happen to anybody if you've got the heart and the goal and the yeah. and the charisma and you say you know what i'm going to sell my soul i'm going to play as hard as i can to make this team you never know free agents i mean when the rosters are made at the end of the at the end of the se uh, training camp there's probably about 20 to 25 percent of all 32 teams have got a bunch of free agents on their roster yeah uh, let me feel draft process mm -hmm. uh, the preparation for it it is always so fascinating. Um, and I was talk I was talking with with Sip uh, the other day, Jonathan Sipri, and he mentioned he actually met you the first time uh, when you were an advisor with Tampa Bay. You were with uh, Coach Shiano as a part of as a part of right. his interview, um, and that was the first time he had met you. And, I'm, and I was reading an article about Stanley. And it's just the questions that are asked during during the interviews. Like well, I think he said the 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 strangest thing he was asked was. Uh, if we were to draft you and then we were to cut you, what would be the reason why? Uh, James Morgan said the strangest thing he, he was asked, uh, if he had to drink, what would be his drink of choice? And James was like, like, like an alcoholic beverage? I, I guess Coors Light. I don't know. Like he, was, he was hoping sure. that Coors Light wasn't the wrong answer. Uh, what, what are you looking yeah. for? You've been on, you've been on sure. both sides of this, you know, advising players, you know, coming out of college on yeah. you know, how to conduct yourself and also, you know, from, from the NFL side. Yeah. Not, so I'm not necessarily asking, you know, when if the odd question is asked, what are, you, what are you looking for? But, you know, maybe to, to that extent, you know, how do you gauge a player during interviews and things like that? Yeah, you know what, AJ, I mean, obviously, by the time you get a chance to start interviewing them, whether it's at the Indianapolis Combine or it's at the Senior Bowl or these all-star games where the scouts and the position coaches start asking kids questions, you've already in your mind, you have a pretty good idea as to what you think of them as a football player because you've probably yeah. watched – at least one season, if not two seasons, and all-star games and bowl games, and, and you've watched them play against bad players where they just dominate, <laughs> and you've watched them play against a really good player, and they've had to yeah. fight their guts out to just to, to be successful. So you have a pretty good idea of their athleticism. Individual questions, I mean, you're looking for kids that have got confidence, yeah. okay? You're looking for kids that, you know, what, what's their priorities? Uh, is it more about you? I mean, one of the questions that we used to ask was we would ask kids all, all the time, you know, what was your best, most memorable college game, a game that you played and you just, I mean, I will remember this for the rest of my life. Yeah. And 
our kids, if you ask any of the kids at FIU right now, they're all going to say it was the team victory beating Miami in Marlin Park. Well, if a kid in the interview says, well, uh, I played against Wisconsin, I rushed for 175 yards and I scored three touchdowns, and you go, did you win the game? No, we didn't win the game. Well, yeah. then it's more about you and it's less about the team. Great point. You know? And so, yeah. so answers of questions that kind of reveal, you know, what kind of person is this guy? Is he going to be a team? Is, is he going to support when you start asking them, you know, questions about one of the big things is, is everybody says, oh, I'm a leader. Okay. Well, AJ, tell me something that you did here in the last six weeks. What'd you do sure. that would show somebody that you're a leader? And you'd give me an answer. You'd say, I, I called all my teammates. Okay. Who doesn't have one answer? Give me another quick. Give me another thing that you did. Yeah. Maybe they got a second answer. Give me a third. If they're a leader, they'll sit there and talk for an hour. I did this. I had them over to my house. We ate pizza. We watched film. We did this. Russell Maryland. And one of the things that made Russell such a legitimate player at the University yeah. of Miami, he would take the projector and the, and the 16 millimeter film, and he would take it to his dorm room, and he would put a sheet on the wall. And he would invite the other defensive linemen or some of the other defensive players over, and he would get them in the room. And before they watched the film, they did their homework. He made them do their homework, and then they watched their film. And, you know, his nickname was, was, was the conscience. I mean, he was kind of the conscience of the entire program that he yeah. wasn't going to let guys down. I mean, he could have sat there, and if you ask him things he did for leadership, I mean, he, he, you'd, you'd get bored listen to how many of them. But, but yeah. most of the agents, and you know, these scouting services and the agents, they'll train their, 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 uh, the player that they sign. They'll tell them, hey, here's these questions that are coming. And that's why sometimes you get the weird, crazy questions, yeah. you know, is because you want to find out how do they handle something that they weren't expecting. Un unexpected, under pressure. Yep. No, that's, a, that's a great point. Hey, Coach, I want to ask you about our two combine guys before we start sure. to wrap things up here. Um, obviously, James and Stanley uh, represented us at the combine this year. And James, it's, it's been awesome to watch. Really, he's the buzz with him has, yep. has just been exponential throughout – throughout the pocket at least every single NFL team uh, at least once yep. and, and then obviously you've had you know there have been in-depth articles you know on him like the Green Bay faction loves the fact that he grew up with you know Aaron <laughs> Rodgers and Brett Favre and and right. certainly it seems like every interview they've they brought that up to him I know on the sure. podcast uh, with uh, Billy Gill she got the most often they were like <laughs> you said yeah my, my Green Bay roots so no doubt yeah, about exactly. it um it, but why do you feel he's been able to rise up the board? Yeah. I, I, th I think obviously we have a good foundation, you know, in his character and how he can answer questions and the leadership yeah. that he has. But, but w w what do you attribute a lot with, with James yeah. to? You know what, AJ, and, and you already said it. I mean, one of the things that was really impressive about this year was that all 32 teams probably came at least two, three, and some of them came four yeah. times to watch – you know, spring practices, uh, the preseason training camp, they came to the games and stuff because they really will look at the Sage Lewis's and the, and the James Morgans and Stanley Thomas and those guys. And here's the thing that I think that almost everybody goes away when they've met with James is how poised that he is, how smart that he is, and he is a football yeah. junkie. If you're going to be a quarterback, I mean, you've got – I mean, James watches as much film as probably the coaching staff. I mean – you, you hear somebody down in a room all by themselves and he's in there and he's, you know, he's maybe doing his homework or he's doing something, but he's got the projector going and he's watching film of, of his own performance or who we're getting yeah. ready to play. And, and, and coaches love that, especially about a quarterback, is that, that they are hungry to learn to continue to get better uh, physically. You know, he's more athletic than a lot of people give him credit for. He, won, he ran on the state championship mile relay team yeah, in high sure school. Did. His arm, he can throw. I mean, there's not one, there's not any offensive coordinator in the National Football League that has any kind of scheme or throw that throw. And I don't care if it's 65 yards down the field or if it's four yards behind the line of scrimmage and you need to put touch on the ball. Uh, I think that they're impressed by that. I think that, uh, you know, the leadership that he did have. I mean, how many kids come from outside a program in their very first year and get voted by your teammates it wasn't unanimous, okay, but it was close to about 85 to 90% of the teammates, and he had only been on the team for two months. 
And now all of a sudden they nominated him as a leader, as one of the captains of the yeah. team in 2018. So, I mean, there's, you start checking the boxes. It's hard to find one that you're not going to check with him. You talk about iconic moments at FIU, him stepping off that team bus once they got back to campus after that big win over Miami and the, the pots and pans banging and folks chanting Captain Morgan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, and as self-admittedly a better nickname for him than J Money, which it was yeah. coming into college. <laughs> he, exactly. he said that. Uh, and the thing about our other guy at the Combine, uh, uh, Stanley Thomas Oliver, I will always respect how he carried himself, how he handled himself after his sophomore year. Uh, you know, he was CUSA all freshman team as a receiver, didn't play much the next year, but he didn't, he didn't leave campus. He didn't leave school. He came to you and said, coach, how can I contribute? How can I get better? What can I do? There's the selfless aspect you're talking about. And then all he did is become one of the best corners, not just in conference USA, college football. I think opponents passer rating when he was targeted was one of the lowest five in all of college football. Uh, and I think that speaks volumes about his character. And it's a, it's a big reason why he, he's seen a lot of attention. Yeah. recently. And you nailed it, AJ. I mean, that's one of the things that when, when you start giving the story about all of your players to those, and you tell them the story about Stanley that, you know, that he had been, you know, a, a freshman, all conference players uh, as, uh, you know, and he was the leading receiver coming back the next season and uh for whatever reason there was some inconsistencies and just things weren't going as good as as obviously stanley would have liked and our coaching staff would have liked and uh the one thing that i regret was is that i waited so long uh you know to go and approach him and say you know what Stan, i wish i'd have done it three or four weeks earlier than i did so that he could have played in a couple more games and, and uh coach he said if that if that's going to help me be a good player and that's going to help our team I'm all in. I'll do it. And literally, in the in the three or four weeks, the bowl game and the last two weeks of the season in practice, you sit there and you look at me. You go, he's going to do it. He's going to be yeah. really good. He's got the height. He's got the length. Uh, I think in 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 the combine and the times he ran in the four fours. Uh, and the other thing is, is that if you people that have watched our games, he's one of the best gunners. Uh, that cover punts and kickoffs and stuff like that. He flies down the field yeah, and he he's physical. He will tackle. He will. He's going to get bigger and strong. He's only been doing this now for like two years. <laughs> Imagine what he's going to do over the next couple of years. And uh, uh, there's a player that's playing in the National Football League right now that's played probably. I think he's getting ready to start like season number eight. And his name was Trey yeah. Boston. And I recruited Trey uh, from Fort Myers. He played for me at North Carolina. And he was a little bit like Stanley in high school. I mean, he played – he was such a good athlete. He could have played receiver. He could play DB and stuff like that. Uh, he's – they're very, very similar in their athleticism. Sure. And uh, and I think that Stanley, I think just because of the type of person that he is in a NFL career. I know a lot of times when corners are having good games, it, it might be – they might be doing it quietly. You, know, you don't really <laughs> notice. It doesn't stand out as much as a running back, a receiver, a quarterback – uh, but there, there are bigger games he took over, and you, and you say out loud, Stanley Thomas Oliver is having a, a heck of a game. Western Kentucky yep. on the road is, is what stood out to me. I mean, the amount of pass breakups and big hits that yep. he had tackles he had in that game. He's had takeover games, and yep. I hope and to know, see a lot more of them at, at the next level. Uh, you know do you want to think? Jake, yeah, let yeah. me say one more thing about yeah. Stanley. That, that the Miami game, we keep going back to that game, but, but you know, he, he, he did a phenomenal job, and this is – the thing that we're when kids sometimes will make those changes from a receiver db back and forth or o-line to d-line but you know doing it early his his instincts became unbelievably better this entire season because mm -hmm. he had he had a season behind him that he could now he knew his responsibility he knew the keys and the things that he was looking for and and him jumps in the miami game and making that interception where you know quarterbacks look at them all Often the eyes are going someplace, but he knows the route concepts. He knows exactly what they're trying to do. Yeah. And he bursts and breaks in front of it. And then because he has that X being a receiver, you know, deal, he's got a lot better hands than a lot of defensive backs have. And so obviously I think that that's going to really try to help him in the next couple of years. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, it's going to be fun yeah. to watch him uh, excel at the next level. Um, just a couple more things for you, Coach, one or two more things. Do want to thank everyone for, for contributing their questions in and hanging out with us for a little yeah. bit on this Zoom. Oh. Coach, a, a, lot of the, a lot of the response, I mean, I, I told you we had a lot of people that wanted to chime in with questions. A lot of the questions for you were from 
high school players that wanted to send you in their film. <laughs> like you got a lot of recruits that are interested. <laughs> well, it's awesome. Good. Well, tell them to send them. Okay. <laughs> because here's what we're doing. I am, I am grading five players per position. Yeah. Every, okay. We're watching. I knocked out five tight ends, five offensive well, line. You've got time to watch film right now. <laughs> our, well, here's what I'm, our assistant coaches, they may get 25 or 30. So I've asked them, give me your top five. I want to look at them first. And then second, wait, give me your next five uh, uh, players, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So yeah. the more players and the recruits that are out there, send your video, okay? <laughs> and then we'll, our position coaches, our coordinators, and I am looking at them and we're grading them, we're evaluating, we're stacking them. Uh, I am praying and hoping, AJ, I hope that we have – the opportunity to come back on campus at some point during the summertime yeah. because one of the major goals that I want to have is I want to have a camp. Okay. Yeah. Even if it's in the middle of July, the end of July before high school and college football goes back, I'd like to have a one or a two day camp to give a lot of these high school kids an opportunity to come and showcase their skills and, and how much they've grown. I mean, high school kids from ages 15, 16, 17, what they look like as a ninth grader and a tenth grader doesn't look anything like what nope. they're getting ready to look like as a senior. So, sure uh, you know, the more we get to know about them, we love it. And you talk about a staff that'll find you. Uh, when James was transferring, he sent out 60 emails, uh, emails to 60 programs. And, and yep. Bryn Renner, our recruiting coordinator, was the only one to get back to him. Uh, the staff has proven itself to, to sure. find talent. All right, Coach, as we start to wrap things up, uh, it is Earth Day in recognition of Earth Day. I thought it'd be interesting to ask, uh, where's your favorite place to go outdoors? Do you have a particular spot you like to take the boat out or a national park? Uh, where's, where's your well, ideal I don't have a boat. I mean, spot? I don't have a boat. I need friends. For the boat, but, uh, <laughs> hey, that's the same uh, thing. It's the same thing. I love, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, my entire life I've loved going to beaches yeah. and I've been fortunate to be able to go to a lot of different beaches in the career like that. But you know, one or two things that have stuck out my entire life. I, I, as a kid, my parents, we drove across America probably four or five times to go see aunts and uncles and stuff. Yeah. And seeing the grand Canyon, is one of the most amazing things mm -hmm. on this planet to just to, to see the erosion that the Colorado river going through there and how, I mean, it's just unbelievably beautiful. And then fortunately about uh, maybe 10 years ago, I got a chance to get on a, on a little bit of a boat and go up and go through uh, the, the uh, Alaska path. And I'm going to tell you what the whole, the, I, we were on it for like about five days there was millions of bald eagles. They, everybody said bald eagles are almost extinct. I said, well, you had been to Alaska because they're, they're thicker. Bald eagles are more thicker than mosquitoes. Yeah. And seeing bears, grizzly bears and salmon and, and uh, you know, uh, whales and orcas and stuff like that, it made you think of what the world and what the planet looked like three, four, five thousand years ago because there's almost like no people. I mean, you'll go, yeah. you'll go for hours along that shoreline and you see a house you don't see any people and it is just unbelievably gorgeous and beautiful. in there i'll say the smoky mountains in Asheville. Ooh, yeah. there's a trail called about a couple thousand feet but as a runner it's uh it's it's one of our favorite things to do and i don't know if you've ever been to northern vermont lake champlain mm -hmm. is a heck of a lot of fun out there beautiful scenic is. uh went tubing up there got thrown out of the tube up there but i'm <laughs> doing that you know what, aj we were fortunate to be americans because there is yeah. to san diego to washington to florida there's some unbelievably beautiful places in America. And, and being able to go see them again, I'll tell yeah, you that, hundred yeah. percent. Last thing, uh, I think it's a Tory thing to ask if anyone's zooming or podcasting at this point in time. Uh, you've probably uh, all the film you're watching and and evaluating. I imagine you've been watching some television or some movies. Uh, <laughs> what's your, give me your? Let's do a draft here. Your your top sure. three. I'll make it a wide range, T movies or television shows okay. that you're watching, or really of all time. Give me your top three, your Butch Davis uh, yeah. streaming draft. Okay. Well, this is one thing, and I actually ask our football team and our football program coaches yeah. and everybody to watch this. If anybody out there has Netflix, yep. Yep. okay, and if you love your family and you love football and you need to watch the movie called Great, yeah, Greater, okay, mm -hmm. and it is a true – based story about Brandon Bullsworth. Brandon was a walk-on football player that accidentally just got a chance to be a walk-on at the University of Arkansas. It's one of the most motivational 
uh, in minutes. If you're not crying, there's a problem. You got, you got, you need a psychiatrist to go talk to. I mean, it is just a, it's a great, great movie. It's good about football. I think that that, you know, is really, really good. Um, what else is out there that's good? Because you're a movie buff, you go well, see movies I, a lot. I, I, so I, I, I think you'd have a good. Yeah. And I don't. I, I, yeah. I love going to movies. I haven't gone in a long time and, and can't go now because theater. Yeah. Uh, I did. I did a binge watch deal where I watched. Uh, uh, oh, Ozark. I've been hearing a lot about I don't that. Know if you've seen that, Ozark is out there, and that's uh, that's kind of an interesting, especially growing up in Springdale, Arkansas, where that's all being. Uh, shot and and is probably about eight it so when they start talking about the towns and the, and the yeah. things it's like oh yeah i was no there doubt. before i saw that no i've doubt. been to that place you know so you got one more cool. you got one more third pick yeah no, i don't know uh you know i Tough I, on I, 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 was, I started watching the michael jordan i watched uh, you did uh, watch the, some of that yeah, absolutely i watched uh, the the first one and i haven't started the second one or the third one yet and well, the, uh, the, Dennis, the Dennis Rodman one's the next one, so you'll have to do it. <laughs> exactly. I can bring yeah, yeah, the there you go. to watch it, you know? <laughs> that's awesome. That's, uh, that's a lot of fun. That's coming up Sunday. Yeah. But, uh, hey, two of those, you got some local roots. Yeah, the, the yeah. greater, the guy from Arkansas, your alma mater, and then the Ozark. Yeah, yeah you got some, some local viewing from your, from your childhood. Well, that's Coach, good. I appreciate the time. This has been a lot of fun. I uh, hope, you're, hope you're hanging in there and, and doing well. I think uh, in the southwest corner of Florida, I'm sure – We'll do this sometime, but uh, you Hope know, so. hopefully, fingers crossed, prayers up that we all start trying to make some progress yeah. on the Zoom. Yeah. Time, be well and be safe. You, you too, AJ, family, and everybody out there, Panther people, stay safe, stay healthy. What's right. up, everybody? We'll see you next time on the Zoom. For now, be well, stay at home. Bins will watch some television, maybe some FIU games that are on YouTube. The whole thing, you, they've got those up yeah. too. We'll there see you, you all soon. Take care, everybody.